Hey, what's up guys, it's Nixium, and today, I'm actually going to be doing a machinima tutorial because, frankly, I haven't released anything on my channel in a while because I'm working on a more, like, editing heavy video, so it's taking more time. Real quick note, before we get started, what I would like to do with this tutorial is I do not want to make a machinima basics tutorial. There's so many of those on YouTube already. Instead, I would like to do a more intermediate, you know, not just how to get rid of a blue screen, how to put a character in a shot and do basic color correction. I would like to show you how to get your shots to look like, you know, some of my shots in my videos, the ones that I actually like, you know, are serious about, not like, wow, meets Xbox One and all that stuff. You know, you know what I mean? So let's, let's just jump right into it. You'll see what I mean. I'm gonna, uh, I already have a model viewer recording recorded and a back shot that I recorded in game. And I'm just gonna get started. And this is After Effects, so we're gonna go to Composition, New Composition. We're gonna call it Fun. And I have, I always have my width set to 1280, height 720. All right, so I'm gonna go to Project, the upper left hand corner. Right click in this gray space import file and I will just import one of my back shots and my recording that I did so I have both of them now so I'll take both of them and I'll drag them to After Effects put the model viewer character on top and there you go now what I want to do is of course I want to get rid of that blue screen so like I said I don't want to go too much into detail with this because there's already tutorials if you want a basics, like Machinima Basics Basics tutorial, I can do that. I have no problem doing it. Just let me know. But this is not a basics. This is intermediate. So, here's our character. We have the blue screen keyed out. And this is usually where Machinima tutorials stop. Maybe they'll show some basic color corrections. But let's go into a little bit more detail. Let me show you how I set up my shots and make them look like the character really fits in the shot. The very first thing, this character is standing on the ground, which means to make him look more realistic like he's standing there, he needs to have a shadow. Do not get lazy. Put shadows under your characters, whether they be 3D shadows or circular shadows. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go in the timeline, right click, new, solid. You can name it whatever you want. You can call it shadow. I'm just gonna leave it as black solid one. Make sure it's black, obviously, because shadows aren't pink, and hit OK. I'm going to drag that black solid underneath the model viewer character, and using my ellipse tool, just left click and hold, I can switch to ellipse tool. I'm just going to make a circle under his feet. Alright, so I've created a circular mask. That's what this yellow circle is, the yellow outline. And with my black layer selected, I'm going to hit F. To bring up the mask feather, I will pull it up, and then I will hit T with the black layer selected, and I will pull down the opacity just a little bit. Okay, let me actually feather that just a little bit more, F, feather, there we go. So he has a shadow under him now. Already he looks like he fits a little bit more realistically into the scene, but now let's go into color correction and how I do it. I have to give kudos to X-Cross because I remember years ago when he told me of this one specific effect and it's called CC Toner. Apply it to the model viewer character and as you can see, it changes the tones of him. Now right now he's brown, so we want to give him a color that is universally in the background. This is a back shot of Ashen Veil, vale, obviously. So I'm gonna change the mid-tone to a blue. Usually the color you're looking for is the color of uh, the distant fog in the terrain. It's usually always the fog in the far distance. So like this blue way over here. Click it. Then I want to turn that blend with original up to about 80. You can also do like 75, play with it a little bit, you know, whatever, just play with it. I set it always to 80. Now what has happened here is if I just turn off the CC toner, you can see I've kind of added a overall slight blue to him, but we're not done. 
Now we're going to move into what I personally do to make the effect really sell. What I'm going to do is in the timeline, I'm going to create an adjustment layer. Now an adjustment layer is a layer that pretty much whatever you apply to it will affect everything underneath it. So to make the adjustment layer, just go to new adjustment layer, right? And with it selected, apply CC toner again for a second time. Now this is Ajinvail, so we want like an ajinvail -y color. So I personally, when it comes to Ajinvail, I like to use this color right here, kind of like this blue between the blue and the sky blue. Hit OK and turn up that blend with original once again to 80%. Hit enter. So what this is doing is this is applying a universal color on both the character and the background to make it blend a little bit better. But we're not done. We're going to apply one more thing to the shot and that is the effect curves. So with the adjustment layer selected, curves. And what I personally like to do is I like to apply a little bit of contrast. And to do that, I'm just going to click in this little corner right here, these two lines intersect and pull that up. And I'm going to click down here where these two lines intersect and pull down. This is just my opinion, but I think having a little bit of contrast in your video does make it look pretty good, but that's just my opinion. Also, in the channel here, I will switch this to blue. And because we're in Ashenvale and there's lots of blues, I'll just pull this up, which means I'm just adding a little bit more blue to this scene. Then I'll switch the channel to red and I'll pull down the red. Pretty much this means I'm pulling out the red. So in a sense, I'm adding green. Think opposites. Now, as you can see here, if I just turn this adjustment layer on and off, you see the huge difference that's like occurring between the character, like the previous shot, and the shot that, you know, we have now. So this actually right here is pretty much a finished scene. Like you could use this because the color correction looks fine, but we're gonna take it just two more steps further just to make this look really good. And this is getting a little bit more artsy fartsy with it. So what I'm gonna do, this is just a technique that I do. I'm gonna select the uh, the model viewer character and I'm gonna duplicate him using control D. And on the top layer, I'm just gonna delete the CC toner. There's no reason to have it. You'll see why. And then using the pen tool, you can click it up here or you can hit the letter G. I'll click and I'll kind of make this diagonal line through him. Now just, you know, be aware of your light source. If the moon is up here in the right hand corner, that's what I'm kind of pretending, then, you know, the light is kind of, you know, hitting his left shoulder. So let me just kind of adjust this just a little bit, put like that. Okay. <clears throat> now, why did I just do this? Because you see, if I turn off the low, the back layer, I pretty much just cut out his feet and one of his arms. What's the point? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the effect fill. Fill, very self-explanatory. You fill it with a solid color, as you can see. I'm going to switch the red to black. And just like that shadow that I put under him, I'm going to hit F with the layer selected, pull up the feather, and I'm going to hit T to bring up the opacity. I'm going to pull down the opacity a bit. And what I have done is I have created a kind of like a realistic shadow that's running across the character. And it makes him fit in the scene so much better. And finally, this is something else you can do if you really want to get artsy about it. Think as if you're using a real camera. Always pretend you're using a real camera in the WoW world. So, in this shot in particular, well, the focus is the character, not the background. So, just like a real camera, the background would be blurred out a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the background layer, select it, and hit Control D. And using the pen tool again, hit the letter G or click the pen tool up there, we are going to cut out like all this stuff that's like kind of far away. So like the distant trees and like all that good stuff. Alright? And then we are going to apply the effect 
Gaussian Blur. Or you can use Box Blur. It's really up to you. I just use Gaussian Blur. I'm going to pull that up a little bit. You'll see it's blurred out the background. And then, to make this hard edge of the mask softer, we're going to hit F and feather it. And now, as you can see, what I have done is I have made a shot, I've color corrected it, I've blurred out the background a little bit so your eyes are more focused on the character who's just standing here. He has a realistic shadow on him, and it just looks good. And if you want to go a little bit more into it, what I'm going to do, this is just one more tip, a lot of machinimators love to use light sweep. The light sweep. They love light sweep, but they don't do it right. I don't understand why. Here's light sweep. Here's what it does. With not the shadow layer, but the back layer selected, I'm going to apply light sweep. Light sweep, in a sense, if you look at it, it just adds like a, a ray of light through the character. Now I'm going to set it to smooth, and I'm going to pull it up. I remember when I was talking earlier about like, oh, hey, let's pretend like the moon is like up here or the light source is up here. Okay, so the moon's up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the sweep intensity to zero. Put it at zero. Never leave this up. Leave it at zero. And then, if the moon's up, up there, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up that edge thickness to like right there. And then pull down that edge intensity. You just want to barely be able to see it. Just barely. And what you create is this realistic light that's being casted on him. I mean, it's some it's very subtle. It's very subtle. And it's not something that like when you're watching the Machinima video, you're gonna be like, oh wow, look at that light on his shoulder. But it makes the character fit so much better into the scene subconsciously. And that is the art of being a film editor. You need to be very artsy and fartsy about it. This is just kind of an intermediate tutorial. I might do an expert. I might go into things like particular and making custom spell effects and whatnot. But I wanted to show you guys how I color corrected scenes and I put them together. I do a little bit more, but I don't want to give away all the super dark secrets that I contain within my head. But I will make more tutorials if you guys are interested. And also, this is the fourth time I have recorded this. Fucking hate Cam Studio. So right now I'm using Hypercam and I pray this video works out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment, like it. If you haven't seen my videos, feel free to check them out. You can look at them on my channel and stay tuned because I'll be posting more very soon. And well, I guess because I haven't uploaded anything in a while, I should give you guys a teaser of what I'm working on. And uh, so here is the teaser. Here's my, my one teaser of what I'm currently working on in, uh, in, uh, in my spare time. You can actually see I'm using the same back shot that I'm using in, uh, in the tutorial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys very soon. See ya.